everyone. This is Simon Peyton Jones. He is a very accredited scholar at Cambridge University. He's where he graduated um, as a computer science major. He also still stays there as an honorary professor of computer science and a graduate su student supervisor there as well. Last year, he got some infamous press because he gave a TED talk over how computer language was becoming revolutionized in elementary school education, but the flack he got for was not with his information, but the fact that his pres entire presentation was written in Comic Sans. So. <laughs> so can any of y'all tell me why you think the font Comic Sans is bad or ugly? Oh, well, it's the worst. Oh, it looks immature. Yeah, it looks like a child. Looks, yeah, child. Yeah, child. Okay, looks childish. Okay, looks childish. Okay. Okay, just terrible. Yeah. All right. Do y'all know what the bandwagon effect is? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Jordan, what's the bandwagon effect? Well, so people jump on board an idea simply because the majority is going along with it. Perfect. Okay, so my proposal today is that I want the bandwagon hate of Comic Sans to stop. If you want to hate on Comic Sans for a legitimate reason, be my guest. But the bandwagon effect is what I'm going to be arguing against today. So let's look at the big picture facts of Comic Sans. It was commissioned by Vincent Canari. He is a designer who has also designed many other fonts that a lot of us are aware of, including Magpie, Dito, and another one called um, Esquire. And a lot of y'all probably don't know these, but if you're an actual someone who was a nerd about font like I am, you would know. So it was commissioned for the Microsoft Windows 1994 release. And the really big thing about this program that Microsoft wanted to really push was that it was making the program a household essential for computers in this time, because this is when computers were starting to enter into the average man's household. So what they wanted to do was make this really highfalutin box of technology personal and something that the average person could understand and use. So after some rejections and revisions, just like any other typeface or design process, Comic Sans was put into Microsoft 94, and it was inspired by the comic book style text that you see in the 60s, 70s, all these Marvel, DC comics, even Top Cow and other things. And it was viewed differently within the design of public worlds, obviously. Y'all are pretty much aware of that. So, Getting into the details, the general public views Comic Sans generally positive right off the bat. When people um, open it up in Microsoft Word and their movie making programs that Microsoft had made, people loved it. It was personable, it was handwritten, it looked casual, it's, it seemed very authentic compared to Times New Roman and Garamond and Georgia and Baskerville and all these really established fonts that were actually created in about the 1800s. So the drop-down menu that Microsoft 94 provided gave this sense of personalization that people really loved. And this is what Comic Sans was designed for. It was designed to be personable. It was designed to be authentic. And the professional use, right when it was released, people started using it on hospital signs, on roadway signs, even on police cars. There's still some floating around in older communities that haven't upgraded their police cars to or vets or whatever else we're driving around, and it says, like, protecting the people on the side. And also, <laughs> yes, another really cool thing that comics do, <coughs> it's actually become a forefront font that dyslexic people really enjoy reading because it is so legible for them, because of the rounded and casual um, characteristics of the letters. However, the public has also gotten on the bandwagon effect that's trickled down from the designers in the world, who freaking hate this font. So, going into that, the design world had an almost immediate dislike of the font. And there are several reasons for it. <laughs> Technical reasons include kerning, which is the space in between individual letters. So when you type something out on a computer, it's automatic kerning. Designers will often go in between letters to make sure it's all nice and even, because default kerning usually isn't superior. So it's naturally hard to kern. And the nature of the font doesn't suit paragraphs. Remember, this was for comic book style. So short little blurbs was the best way for Comic Sans to be presented. 
Also, the aesthetic reasons and the functional reasons are tied because it's so rounded and casual. Like we said before, it seems childish. It doesn't seem professional. So the restricted use for it, it's obviously not something you're going to put on the Fortune 500 presentation. Mm -hmm. It's going to be something that you reserve for more homegrown and grassroots thing. But this is also what the font was designed for. So keeping that in mind, the bandwagon effects for the designers is, oh, since it's not a Swiss designed Helvetica, which also it can be used poorly. Let me just put that out there. Helvetica is not the ultimate font. Um, the restricted use, the bandwagon, um, in that designers who weren't as educated or who just didn't know about the font's creation, they thought, well, the Milton Glaser, Paula Sher don't like it, so why should I like it? So my conclusion today is Comic Sans has its place. It can be used well if it's used correctly, just like any other font. There is a website called Comic Sans <coughs> Panel that is very funny, you should look it up, but it says that there are three criteria for the best way to use Comic Sans, and that's if your audience is 11 and under, which is fair, if you're designing a comic book, and also if a dyslexic person requests this font because they find it the easiest to read. So the font's designer, Vincent Canari, said if you love it, you don't know much about typography, and if you hate it, you don't know much about typography either, and you should get another hobby. So this shows that it's a qualifying argument. Comic Sans has a place. No, it is not the best font, but it does have a function. And in the world of design, if it has a function, it has a use, and thus it should not be hated. Also, I got these little two things to show that Comic Sans actually can be used well in the right setting. And I know, that seems weird, but this left one is actually pretty good. It's kitty, it's childish, it's fun, it's playful, but that's what it was designed for, and this is how it works. The one on the right also does the same thing. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's funny, it's interactive. It's not time to roam it's not stiff, it's not a poor presentation. So, thank you for listening, and I hope if you hate Comic Sans now, you at least have a better reason for doing so.